All right, so it's been a little bit since Age of Overlord has come out, and I've gone to a regional in the Age of Overlord format, and I actually did uh, pretty well for myself. I went 5-3. I got 62nd place of this particular regional, which is uh, actually like pretty good for my standards. I mean, my last regional, I went 3-3. I don't know if I consider myself a particularly good Yu-Gi-Oh! player, although that might be more in comparison to the guys at my locals I play with, which are consistent, like regional topper guys so now for this regional i actually brought with me branded chimera and i did surprisingly well i actually had somebody at my locals suggest it to me that hey you know this might seem like a good deck fit for you and i'm really glad that i took that advice because this has really worked out well for me so what you see here splayed out on my A-roll here is my main deck here. I'm playing 45 cards in the main deck. Uh, you're playing the Chimera engine, you're playing a Fright for Package, you're playing your branded stuff, hand traps, just miscellaneous sort of board breakers, other cards, and then uh, two cast here Fenrir. Oh right, I also forgot after I shot all that footage, I forgot to put Triple Tactics Thrust in the main deck section. Branded Chimera, I think is a very interesting deck because it kind of solves some of the problems that normal branded has of putting so much weight on the brand infusion that if it get ashed that it cuts off a lot of your like ceiling in terms of what you're able to do on that turn that you try to resolve it brand infusion can not just represent you know extension of a board but also it can be like your combo starter if you don't open correctly like you still get a piece of interaction from it but you get going with the rest of your engines. I'm playing the Pfeiffer package in here just because it lets you fuse a little bit more. Obviously the polymerization is good for uh, the Guardian Chimera uh, in the extra deck so your opponent can't target it. Makes it like a little bit harder to out. Um, you just have a little bit more resource generation. Obviously though, with the uh, Pfeiffer package, you're playing way more into Droll. You're way more subsequent to Bricking, which I'll talk about later. Fenrir was kind of the underlying MVP of this deck. I'm actually very surprised at how well it performed. I mean, obviously it's Fenrir, it's good, but I think Fenrir has definitely saved my butt in a couple of games. If you like really brick pretty hard, a uh, big wing Burfamet and a Fenrir, you can just special the Fenrir and then tribute summon for the Burfamet to go grab your Chimera pieces and then start playing. I'm also playing one Aluber, two Branded Opening uh, as like a small mini engine to be able to grab Branded Fusion. I liked it throughout the course of that day, but I drew Aluber too many times. This deck really relies on your normal summon. And so having Aluber in your hand just really, really sucks unless you have like a crazy, crazy hand. Now there's a couple cards in this table you might be a little confused by. You might be thinking like, huh, what? Um, so the first one is Fusion Armament. Uh, that's the one that special summons a monster from the extra deck uh, based on uh, like another fusion monster listening as material. That I play this so I could summon out the original vanilla Fusion Chimera. So that way I can have all of my monster and target negates off of the um, Mirror Sword Knight and the Cornfield Coddle online before I even commit to anything. Because I don't know if you've noticed, uh, maybe seeing this deck being played, but this deck has a little bit of an infinite permanence problem that if you go big wing Burfamet and they try to imperm you and you don't have like a Chimera Fusion or something to dodge it, that you're not gonna get, you know, your, your game plan rolling. Fusion Armament also doesn't destroy the monster in the end phase like a lot of these other kind of special summon a fusion monster from the extra deck, uh, one card type deals. So you do get to keep it around. So that way, if your opponent outs a monster or negates a monster that gets treated as Chimera, your negates in the graveyard will still be online, which often can be a factor. I'm also playing this Versago here as a fusion substitute for Dragoon. I tried messing with original vanilla Dark Magician in here. I didn't particularly like it. It was just a little bit too much of a brick. Um, Versago is not really like that bad of a brick because it is a fiend type monster and so that turns on your Chimera Fusion. So if you do hard draw into it, you can still at least use it for something. And then the Hand Trap lineup, two Imperm, three Droll, uh, three Ash Blossom. That seemed about right. That seemed to cover about like everything I think was really relevant in the format. I was only playing two Imperm uh, just because this already was 45 cards, you know, you've got so many different kind of 
engines and garnets in here that you don't want to draw into all of them, obviously. And I did like draw into a fair amount of garnets. Really the only parts of this deck that I really thought underperformed, I think if this regional went any longer would have definitely bit me in the butt, uh, was three Chimera Fusion. I only put in the third Chimera Fusion, I think like a couple days beforehand, just because I was having a hard time trying to get another piece of disruption going if I had to like hard commit to my Burfamet line of like sending a fiend to the graveyard for any of the funny floodgates that I play. And so I was hoping that the third Chimera Fusion in the main would just help me out a little bit. And there was just so many DD Crows running around that, I don't know, maybe there are people main decking it. Um, maybe the third Chimera Fusion would have been a better side deck choice. And the whole Frightford package, I just was choking on constantly throughout the day. Just absolutely constantly throughout the day. I would just draw like the wrong number of pieces. I would maybe side out a polymerization for like something else. And then I would, I couldn't activate my Fright for Patchwork with a poly in hand. So that was just a dead card in my hand. So this whole engine here, I would definitely just take out, maybe put something else in, maybe just even cut the deck back down to 40. Now the extra deck for this deck is just obscenely, obscenely tight. Just lots and lots and lots of different options and stuff. Um, just extra copies of things in order to just play a little bit of the grind game. Uh, I guess I could have technically had a 15th flex slot if I had not played uh, the Fusion Armament, uh, Chimera of the Flying Mythical Beast, but I think that small package actually worked out uh, for like the entire day, actually. If there was one more card I could have put in my extra deck, it would have been Albalenitus because Albalenitus, I think, outvalues Albion purely because it can grab anything, any normal spell that says fusion in the name. And sometimes I wanted to grab fusion armament instead of just branded fusion if I made a mirror jade. But the problem was is that Albion was just a little bit more flexible that I could send a mirror sword knight to graveyard in order to make an Albion and then get a mirror jade going. So ultimately Albion won out over Albalenitus, but it was a very, very close call. You know this is a tight deck list when I go to an eight round regional and I use everything in my extra deck at least once, right? Some people will go to YCSs and not use one thing in their extra deck the entire like 16 games they have to play. But here, little old me playing half the amount of games, I, I, use, I use literally everything. I, the Dragoon package was very, very helpful in just setting up the gate so I just get, wouldn't get absolutely blown out by evenly just choking out certain people on specific, you know, power search cards or something. I didn't play two Guardian Chimera though, um, just because I didn't feel the need to. Maybe there was like one instance when I was thinking about like in a game that I'm like, oh, maybe I could go for like a second one, but there was like another alternative and basically way more optimal line to lethal that I could go for. Now, as for my side deck here, I really had to get a lot of help and like crowdsource my side deck. Uh, I ended up taking somebody's suggestions uh, like literally the night before. And I was very, very, very happy with my side deck choice. Um, really the only little snafu that came with the side deck choice is I was going to play Invader of Darkness, but this particular copy that I had owned since I was very young um, was just bent in a way that even with double sleeving, I had to double check with the head judge about it. And he said that you can't, you can't play that. It's just, you could tell, you know, if you're going to draw that for cheating reasons. And so I said, okay. And so I just decided in like a second Godarla instead, but none of the Kaijus ever came up. Any of the matches I played, I never ran into Pearly a single time. Uh, similarly, uh, my Barrier Statue of the Abyss never used it once the entire match. I think every other side in my card in my side deck I used at least once throughout that entire day. As you can see from my side deck here, it was just a lot of floodgates against very specific kinds of decks here. Uh, End of Anubis for any sort of graveyard reliant strategy like Tear Lament slash Unchained. Uh, King Tiger Wangu for Pearly and I guess Fluandaries a little bit. Uh, and then Barrier Statue of the Abyss uh, for any non-dark deck. Now I have been labbing uh, Barrier Statue of the Abyss um, a little bit. I mean, it's not a particularly new discovery, but I found with Abyss that it really turns off certain decks. And so they have to like commit at least a little bit to try to beat over it. 
and it doesn't turn off any of your disruption uh, that special summons from the extra deck. So Guardian Chimera is dark, for example. Predator Plant Dracocepalia is dark, for example. So if your opponent just tries to beat over it, you can just go Guardian Chimera, uh, pop their stuff. And so they, they really can't do anything about it. So that's it for like the deck profile side of this video. Um, if you're actually interested in anything related to like skill and like personal expression and any of the matches I played, like just wa keep watching for the rest of the video. To be honest, this is like probably the most fun I've had playing Yu-Gi-Oh in real life like ever. I go to locals pretty regularly. I've gone to regionals. I've gone to the 250th YCS, but I've really just really enjoyed going to this event and just playing against a lot of people. And it was way less stressful than I thought because I play at such a high power local with such competitive players that for like most of the day, I was playing against people who were like, were either below my skill level or like on my skill level. And so it was eight rounds of this regional. So not the biggest regional ever, but at the same time though, I think it's like enough more than like, you know, maybe a big locals that there's enough rounds that really like the best decks and skill expression can come through and that die rolls didn't really particularly matter as much. So round one, I actually get paired up with somebody I play at locals regularly, um, which was uh, kind of weird. And they were playing full Andres, um, a little bit of a hard matchup for this deck. They had shifter all three games, so I couldn't really do anything about it. I couldn't wangu them really. And I did try to, you know, imperm them and negate their stuff, but they had, they had access to map and a normal summon every single game, so I couldn't do anything about it. So I immediately lost my first round. Now my second round, I was playing against this person who was playing like blue eyes kind of dragon pile kind of stuff. I felt really bad for this player because they clearly weren't as skilled as I was. I felt really bad. I hate really going up against people and just absolutely curb stomping them. The guy was really friendly. I mean, English wasn't his first language, so I had to really like talk him through things and explain a lot of my cards and stuff. We had to take our time. I mean, I, I 2 owed him, so I mean, we had plenty of time here, but... Now, game two was really weird because he did actually put up a pretty like menacing board altogether. Um, considering his deck. He put up like a Jet Dragon, a Hope Harbinger, um, some other stuff too. So I'm like, okay, I don't know how to get through this because my hand was absolutely terrible. Okay, you wanna know what my hand was? It was, I think, two Fusion Armament, two Chimera Fusion evenly matched. I'm not even joking. Okay, I draw for turn and I draw Branded Fusion. And so I'm like, okay, I'm clearly gonna lose here. So I go for the evenly, he keeps the Hope Harbinger, and then I attempt to go Fusion Armament to try to summon out from my extra deck. And he negates the Fusion Armament, and that just lets me go off with Branded Fusion. And I just snowball all of my advantage. It was absolutely insane. I should not have won that game. You know, that was probably the worst hand I've ever played and won a, and won a match with. Man, that was, that was crazy. Now, I don't remember exactly if this was round three or four, but this was like somewhere in there. Uh, I played against Tier Limit and, you know, I had come prepared with the end of Anubis and everything, and I, I still lost. Um, I will say though, that I have gotten really, really absurdly skilled at playing around Triple Tactics talents somehow. Like our game one, I managed to just really beat him hard like he kind of bricked and he had a triple tack in his hand and so i was recognizing that he was going to try to go for a beatrice he went triple tack to steal my chimera to go into a beatrice i made a guardian chimera to pop my own chimera and then he just scooped he's like let's go game two and then game three i try to do my funny burfamet thing some at end of anubis he just super polys it and we just hash it out just he he just had that one piece of interaction over me and, and he, you know, he won that match. And then that other round, I played against another friend um, I had played at Locals. He was playing Rika Sun Avalon. I just lost to Rika Sun Avalon. Just, just like a hard deck to like know without actually playing it. I, I lost pretty fair and square on that one. I think around round five, I ended up getting a free win because my opponent was a no-show. So I guess they just dropped, but like didn't check off that they were going to drop. So I just got a free win. I went and I got food. Uh, there was no lunch break or anything. This regional was like that small. So I went, I got nourished and stuff like that. Now round, round six, I played against Tier Limit again. 
I, I could not believe it. If I had to play that against another tier limit player like that day, I probably would have just like quit. Like I was just so exhausted for playing against tier limit, every single little interaction that they had. Um, the DD Crows helped and everything like that, but yeah. And the end of Anubis actually managed to work on them this time uh, in my games two and three. Round seven, I went to play against Vanquish Soul and um, you know, it wasn't really until Master Duel that I understood how like obscenely powerful this deck was because I've played it a fair amount at my locals, but it just seems like it doesn't do anything. Like it just makes Fenrir, Rock of the Vanquisher and like accumulates resources and plays Tikaboo, but a lot of the decks I play like don't get affected by Tikaboo, so it just really doesn't do anything. So yeah, it was a pretty clean 2-0 here. I'm not affected by Tikaboo whatsoever because of all the different monster typings and everything. I just clear out the whole board and everything. Game two was a little bit more intense because I think both of us had bricked a little bit. So it was very much Fenrir Wars where we were just like, okay, we're gonna go Fenrir, banish the other person's Fenrir face down. Um, you know, just kind of like stall each other out a little bit until I could get a uh, game on them. And then round eight, the last round was Rescue Ace. And I was so excited to play Rescue Ace because I had not seen Rescue Ace all day. I wanted to play against Rescue Ace so badly, man. And I 2 0 that Rescue Ace player so obscenely hard. Like, I, I, I should not have won that match. I should not have won that match. My opponent, like, if they had done one thing differently, I, I should not have won that match. So, so game one, I brick pretty bad on my edge imp stuff. And so the only thing that I can make was a Magnum the Reliever. So I'm like, okay, a Magnum Reliever draw a card. Okay, this is another brick, okay. So I set Call by the Grave, uh, I set Chimera Fusion, and I normal summon Gazelle. I'm trying to bait them into thinking maybe I have a Guardian Chimera or something. So they go normal summon Rescue Ace Impulse. They attempt to bait the uh, Magnum. I chain the Magnum to pop the Impulse. They chain the Impulse Tribute to Special Rescue Ace deck. I called by the impulse and then they scoop. What? <laughs> that single call by the grave like completely won me game one. It was insane. Like I bricked, but my opponent bricked too. It was nuts. So game two, my opponent goes first. They make the whole rescue ace board, um, like a bunch of rescue ace stuff, like an SP little knight. Um, no negates interestingly enough though. Um, they could have maybe gone for a Jet Synchron, but I don't even know if they were playing Jet in their list. But um, so I have Harpy's Feather Duster in my hand and Super Poly. I just do, you know, Harpy's Feather Duster, their whole back row. Um, I do my, my uh, Mirror Sword Knight to Big Wing Burfamet. They try to SP the Burfamet. I Super Poly uh, fuse into a, uh, a Mud Dragon. And I really do like chew through a lot of their interaction. Make a Guardian Chimera in the turn. They flip it face down with the Preventer. I get to pop and I draw. And the stupidest idea comes in my head, right? So I think that at some point in the turn, I think they activate um, like an impulse or an emergency or something. They summon a Turbulence in attack position. And so I go Branded Fusion, Branded Fusion for Lubellion, and I shuffle back four monsters in order to summon a uh, Chimera the Illusion Beast with four materials made on it. So I hit the Turbulence four times for a game. <sighs> now I am very, very happy with these results. I played pretty good, it was pretty fun. I got to really learn a lot about how the deck plays and like interactions and everything. Um, really the only thing I think maybe in hindsight I should have done was maybe instead of doing this whole edge and package that maybe I would have played Master Tau. I think people were experimenting with Master Tau uh, like around the time it was regional, but I don't think anybody realized how absolutely good it was until I think um, like MST TV Tombox made a video about it where he talked about the alternative combos that you could make. I really highly recommend this deck. I mean, I'm biased obviously because I own it. I spent money on it. So, you know, I have a little bit of incentive to say that it's good, but I will say that it did test a lot of my skill, that there's a lot of like different, like ways that it can challenge you. Like it's not just linear combo lines. There's a lot of things you have to consider. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can play. There's a lot of different builds. So anyways, guys, that's it for the video and uh, have a good day.